Hi everyone, Megan here from Beguiled by Books, and today I'm going to share with you my October reading wrap-up and some reviews. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the end of October already. It is officially what I like to call the holiday season. Uh, we've got Halloween coming up, we've got uh, Thanksgiving in the United States coming up, as well as the Yule time holidays and the end of year holidays, which I have a lot of fun celebrating. So it is my favorite time of year to read lots of books. I am super close to hitting my 100th book. In fact, I'll probably hit that by the time you've uh, watched this video. So I'm looking forward to achieving that little milestone for my year. But let's talk about the books I read in October. I read 11 books. And while I had a really solid plan going into October, I ended up getting a ton of books from the library uh, that I had had on hold for a little while. And it was one of those where a bunch of them all came available pretty much at the same time. So I was going through a bunch of library books so that I could return them in a timely manner for the next person in line. So in October 2023, I read the seventh book of the Cormoran Strike series called The Running Grave. This was the best book of the series so far. It's all about a cult and one of the private investigators going deep undercover into the cult to try and take it down. It was extremely well done. I was on tenterhooks from the moment uh, the book started very intriguing. And of course, the series did not wrap up in any way. So I am now desperate for book number eight. So really looking forward to seeing where a Cormoran Strike series goes, but The Running Grave was absolutely fantastic. Interestingly, The Running Grave took me down a little bit of a cult rabbit hole um, because I've always had a weird, curious fascination with cults. So I watched a couple of documentaries um, and found some other books to read. So that was a big theme here in October. However, after The Running Grave, I read The Secret History by Donna Tartt. That was published, I think, in 1992. And that book has been around for a while. A lot of people like it. It's, you know, dark academia, a little bit creepy. Um, it was fine for me. It I can see how it would have been really cool and awesome maybe back in 1992, but with the dark academia genre, uh, with so much change in literature over the last 30 years, um, it was fine. It, it wasn't as like, oh my God, to me, it was a super like male centric book. Um, nothing bad. Yeah. Meh. Whatever. Um, once I finished The Secret History, I had Mexican Gothic from my local library, and I really enjoyed that one. I'd heard good things about it when it came out a couple years ago and hadn't really gotten it. I saw the newer book, Silver Nitrate, by the same author in my local bookstore, and I was wondering if I should buy it. So I decided to read Mexican Gothic first and blew through Mexican Gothic. It was pretty lighthearted, a little bit creepy, a little bit sciencey, a little bit magic. It was, it hit the spot for a uh, not horror kind of creepy Halloween-y time of year book. So really enjoyed that one. Uh, was very happy I got to read that. Um, while I was reading fiction books, I was also reading a nonfiction. I like to have a fiction and a nonfiction going simultaneously, just depending on my mood. So I read Social, Why Our Brains Are Wired to Connect. My husband had actually recommended this book to me. He read it a, a few weeks back and I was able to get it and read it. And I really enjoyed it. This book was all about our literal neural pathways in our minds that make us want to be more social creatures. So even the most introverted of us uh, still has a desire for connection and why that is from a very um, scientific perspective as well as from a psychological perspective. So really enjoyed social, uh, why our brains are wired to connect. Um, it was not an overlong book either. I was able to get through it pretty quickly and it wasn't so scientific that it was off-putting. So again, that was a good nonfiction to read in amongst my uh, lots of fiction books that I had. 
Then I read another quick little nonfiction called, I think it's Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. I've always been a fan of books like uh, the Hoga books from Denmark and uh, Helen Russell is one of my favorite authors in the nonfiction space. And so I was really looking forward to reading this and it's been on my TBR for a couple of years and it blew through it really fast, but was a good amalgamation of a lot of things that you probably already know, but are put together in a really awesome way in terms of diet and exercise and community um, and how these uh, this community in Japan has one of the longest lifespans on the planet and why that is. So I really enjoyed that book. It was hopeful. It's uplifting. Um, I read that after a death in the family this month, and it was it was just what my heart needed. So really enjoyed that. Back to the cult rabbit hole that I went down. I also read The Cult of We, We Work, Adam Newman, and The Great Startup Delusion this month. Again, this book had been on my TBR for a little while. And after reading The Running Grave and thinking about cults and what is a cult, and we think of cults in this really negative, harmful light, but there are all types of cults like workplaces and communities and things like that. It's it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I read The Cult of We and really enjoyed it. As someone who's been working in the startup and tech space for over a decade now, um, I found that story absolutely fascinating. Also, narrative nonfiction is one of my favorite genres where it's a nonfiction, but it's told like a novel. Um, I, that was, that book was really well done. So if you like nonfiction, if you like stories and you like kind of that techie world that the cult of we is a really, really good book to read. It's absolutely amazing how one man's delusion created a whole movement and, and the rise and fall of that whole situation. It was fascinating. Um, again, in the vein of nonfiction and cult books, I read cultish. I was able to get Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montell from my local library. And I saw Amanda Montell interviewed for a documentary I saw on Netflix. So I got the book, of course, because that's what we do as readers, right? So I got Cultish and started reading it. And she, her whole premise is exactly what I mentioned a couple minutes ago, which is cult is not inherently a bad thing. And it wasn't really a bad thing until 1969 with Charles Manson and the Charles Manson cult and the murders. So this was a really awesome look into the language and the linguistic background of cults and what makes people follow something and how it's not just the, the terrible instances that we know from history, but it's also things like CrossFit, SoulCycle, Lululemon, uh, multi-level marketing, all of those types of things. Are they cultish? That is the premise of the book. I found it a very interesting um, thought exercise as a book. And again, really quick, very engaging, really enjoyed that book. Um, would recommend that to anyone. Then I dove into... Amanda Montell's other book that's out called Word Slut, A Feminist Guide to Taking Back the English Language. And that was really interesting to just dive into the origin of a lot of words that are insults that we know today, especially insults uh, towards women and pejorative terms for women. So that was just, again, a fun, interesting book to read around the origin of words and why reclaiming things is so important to help uh, diminish the negative meaning that they have. Uh, so really fascinating read. Then I had been on a more of a nonfiction kick as throughout the month, as you can tell, again, I had a death in the family. So when I feel those feelings, I like to uh, go back into my facts to help balance the feelings. So there's a lot of nonfiction in October. I read World Travel and a Reverent Guide by Anthony Bourdain. It's not technically by Anthony Bourdain. It's by um, another author who worked with Anthony Bourdain before his death. And I thought it was going to be like a, like a proper book, but it's almost like a reference guide of different places to stay and eat and how to get in and out of these countries that Anthony Bourdain really loved and enjoyed on his various shows over the years. So I was able to read that really quickly because there's straight up like phone number, address, booking information in a lot of these things. So there's not a lot of meat, no pun intended, 
uh, to the book, but there is a lot of uh, recommendations. Um, what's interesting about books like this is I don't know how long they hold up because I don't know how long those restaurants or hotels operate. So it would be really interesting to compare contrast what's still open versus what was published at the time. Um, the last nonfiction book I read in October was Set Boundaries, Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself. Uh, this book was recommended by one of the women I know from my local bookstore, Blackbird Books and Coffee in Raleigh. And it was a short book, very easy to read, but it's all about why boundary setting is really the important thing you have to do um, to help reclaim your life when you are experiencing feelings like anxiety, depression, stress, burnout, things like that. Um, so if you've experienced those things, which honestly, who hasn't these days, the, the Set Boundaries book was really powerful in the sense that there are tons of little nuggets and tons of really big concepts as well to help you set better boundaries with your friends, your family, your workplace, your kids, all the different influences in your life so that you can use boundary setting as a self-care mechanism. Then finally, the last book I read in October was Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, th wow, this book. So I don't like Charles Dickens. I'll admit that. I, I, I struggled in school when I was made to read Charles Dickens. Not my jam. I don't know why I thought Demon Copperhead would be any better because it's a retelling of David Copperfield set in um, rural Appalachia in the early to late 90s at the beginning of the op opioid epidemic. And wow, it's just super depressing. So super depressing. Um, beautifully written. Barbara Kingsolver obviously does not casually win the Pulitzer Prize. She is a master with words and tone and things like that. And so all credit to Barbara Kingsolver. Um, but wow, yeah, the story itself is just oh, so utterly depressing. Um, but still a good read if you are interested in that type of, of story and setting and things like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it was the right book at the right time for me, uh, given how my month had gone. So I'll I'll reserve my official thoughts and feelings for later when I'm a little more clear headed. But yeah, Demon Copperhead, beautifully written, beautifully told, super depressing storyline. Um, and I'm in the middle of a couple of books right now. I don't know if I'll finish them before October ends. Probably not, but I got an advanced reader copy of The Future. And I am also reading a nonfiction book called In Defense of Witches. Uh, so again, trying to keep on the Halloween theme. I also might try and squeeze in Silver Nitrate um, really quickly before spooky season ends and I turn my attention to the end of year holiday celebrations. What have you read in October? I would really love to know some of your favorite books. Drop a comment below and please, if you like this video and this content, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.